Hey folks, this is Todd Coburn with the Aerospace Structures Series. This is a uh, tag on to video 13 for Structures 2. Students are struggling with how to calculate the effective diameter when you have, for members, when you have a bolted preloaded joint. Let's take a quick look at how that's done. Let's suppose we have a bolt. Let's say the bolt has a head diameter of one half inch. Let's say that the washer, just to make things simple, is a one inch outer diameter washer. Let's say we have three members. Our bolt comes through here, just like this, with some part of it being threaded and some part of it not. Now, what we're going to do, let's say that this is 0 0.1 inch. Let's say this is 0 0.1 inch, and that this is 3.0 inches. Sound good? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to identify these numbers. One, let's uh, actually, let's switch the color on that. One, two, three. And if we want to know the effective diameter, what we're going to need to do is fan out our loads or our, uh, from the bottom outer diameter of the washer at 45 degrees. I'm just sketching this. Now, the beauty is since we're assuming that this is 45 degrees, as our handbook says, that makes our calculations quite a bit easier and it's all approximate anyways. So for the first washer, we're gonna have our effective diameter for plate number one. We're looking for that diameter, which occurs right here through the center line, right here through the center line, and right here through the center line. You'll notice that we get two cone angles, and each of these is going to have two values, one coming from the upper cone and one coming from the lower cone. We're going to be looking for the smaller of those. That means this first one, we're looking for the dimension from here to here, that's our effective diameter. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna assume that the washer is completely effective. That's true if the washer is relatively thick and not too large of a diameter. We're gonna say that diameter of the washer outer, since we're fanning this out at 45 degrees, this is gonna come down T over two and out T over two, down T over two and out T over two. That means we're gonna have the effective diameter, the outer diameter of the washer plus we're going to have this is T over 2 and T over 2. So that means it's plus T1, right, is the effective diameter. That means if this is 1 and that's 0.1, that is good because we're coming out half a diameter and out a half a diameter. That's a total of a full diameter. So that's going to be 1.1 inches. Now we come to effective diameter of two. We're going to again start with the diameter of the washer. Now we can uh, actually work our way through each of these, but it's easy to get confused. It might be easier just to come down here and take this dimension. That's going to be T1 plus T2 over two. So that's going to be 1.5, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15 from here to here. And that means it goes out 0.15. Yet the same thing here, 0 0.15, 0 0.15. This means we're gonna be out uh, plus 
0.15 on the one end plus 0.15 on the other end. So that one is going to be 1.3 inches. Now, notice we're also going to get a value from the lower cone angle. That one would be 1 plus we have 3.05, 3.05. So this is 3.05, 3.05 plus 1. That's ridiculous. That's much larger and is not valid. Now coming from the bottom, this one, the smaller cone angle is the lower cone angle. So now we're going to come from the bottom washer. The effective three then is going to be D washer outer on the bottom. And then we're going to have plus. And if we come up to here, we see that's T over two and T over two, T over two and T over two. So it's actually plus T of plate three, which means it's just uh, three, what, four inches, right? 4.00 inches because we have one inch and then we're coming up by uh, 1.5 and up by 1.5, which means it's now a four inch diameter. So our three answers, the effective one is 1.100, effective diameter two is 1.300 and a vector diameter three is 4.00. Now, if you had tried using the upper cone angle for the, for the third plate, you'd get way too big of a value. And if you try to use the lower for either of these other two plates, you're gonna get way too big of a value. So that's how it works. Give it a shot. Make sure you know how to do this. All your calculations for stiffness will be nonsensical if you can't calculate the effective diameter of the plates.